Hey guys, it's Ritak a Girl Mary and welcome back to our YouTube channel. For today, pag-uusapan natin yung pinaka the best smartphone sa A e series ng Samsung which is their Samsung Galaxy A73 5G. So yes, tama ang narinig nyo. Ito yung pinaka premium na smartphone nila sa kanilang mid-range lineup. Pero ang tanong, gaano ba kasulit itong smartphone na to? By the way, no, pasensya na guys if wala tayong unboxing video. But at least, kompleto naman itong magiging video natin ngayon since this will be a long-term review already. Medyo matagal-tagal ng um, nasa sa akin itong smartphone na to and I made sure na hindi na tayo magdadoble pa ng video. So yes, diretso, full review na. Wala man tayong unboxing video for the A73 5G, I just wanna make it clear sa mga bibili in the future na wala pong kasamang charger inside the box. So yup, it only comes with a USB Type-C to USB Type-C charging cable. At syempre, yung ating panundot. Anyway, here in the Philippines, may tatlong variants itong A73 5G. The cheapest, which has the 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage, cost 26,990 pesos. For the 8GB RAM variant na merong 128GB storage, that one naman details for 27,990 pesos. And lastly, yung pinakamahal which retails for 29,990 pesos, meron namang 256GB of storage. So yes, somehow, medyo marami kayo mapagpipilian depending on what you need and depending on your budget. Design muna tayo, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina. Yung design niya, it is very familiar looking. Kasi nga, kamukha pa rin niya yung A72. So yes, walang major redesign na nagganap dito. Siguro no, ang bago yung kulay na ito lang, which is the mint colorway. Na talaga namang sobrang na-attract ang lahat, lalo na sa TikTok. If hindi pa kayo nakafollow, please follow. Yes, quick uh, quick plug tayo. <laughs> Actually, no, itong color na ito is, I think only available sa A73 5G. If hindi kayo masyadong fan ng ganitong colorway, you might want to consider the other colors which is the white or the black one. Although it may seem familiar to you guys, when it comes to feel and yung pinaka parang outer design niya talaga, very similar sa kung ano yung na-feel ko when I was holding the S22. Although this specific phone, A73 5G, is still made of plastic, even yung kanyang frame. So yes, medyo na-disappoint ako on this part. Since again, we are talking about a high-end mid-range device. Anyway, despite its plastic material, it doesn't feel cheap at all naman, and light pa rin hawakan. Yun nga lang, no, kahit na medyo mag lang yung A73 5G, it is a bit taller. Taller, compared sa mga usual smartphones na nire-review natin. So, people with small hands, katulad ng kamay ko, katulad ng meron ako, it may feel a bit awkward to hold one-handed. Actually, impossible na gamitin siya one-handed. Good news naman, meron siyang IP67 water and dust resistance. So, somehow, yung competitors niya at this price point, medyo talo on this part since... Marami ngang wala naman ding IP rating, pero ganito ang presyohan. Overall, for the design, sa tingin ko, I would rate it 8 out of 10. Actually, unahin ko ang performance, hindi dahil nagustuhan ko siya, kung hindi dahil na-disappoint ako. It features a Snapdragon 778 5G processor rather than Samsung's own Exynos Silicon. So yes, medyo marami-rami ang nagulat noong lumabas yung official specifications ng bagong A-series ng Samsung. Sa totoo lang, it could have been better kung gumamit ng medyo mas higher chipset si Samsung dito sa kanilang A73 5G, katulad ng Snapdragon 870 or kaya na lang nung meron tayo from um, MediaTek which is the Dimensity 1200. Most smartphones at this price point ganito yung chipset na ginagamit sa kanya. So, when it comes to playing games, katulad ng, sige, sagarin na natin, Genshin Impact, couple of sessions, guys, talaga namang na-challenge agad yung phone. Na-challenge kasi syempre, in a sense na tayo ay naka-highest settings at talagang nag-warm kaagad yung ating smartphone and delivered 30 FPS on average with frequent frame drops. 
So yes, kung hindi kayo naglalaro ng mga heavy games katulad ng Genshin, surely yung E73 5G won't disappoint you. Anyway, pag mga regular mundane task lang naman, hindi ito magiging issue din sa inyo. Pero para lang naman sa amin ni Jason, nung tinetest namin yung unit, sa tingin ko kapag mga demanding games na talaga ang nilalaro nyo, kailangan medyo mas powerful na silicon na ang gamitin nyo, katulad ng mga meron tayo from the Galaxy S series. This is if, of course, Samsung pa rin yung nais na gusto nyong bilhin. Anyway, out of the box, itong E73 5G runs on the Samsung One UI 4.1 based on Android 12. Like other flagship phones ng Samsung, in-insure nila tayo guys na magkakaroon tayo ng 4 years Android update and 5 years security updates. So yes, software-wise, hindi kayo mamom problema sa device. Yun nga lang, no? Ito lang yung gusto kong, of course, ipaalala sa mga nanonood sa atin. Hindi lang din naman software ang consider natin dito, but also the chipset. Hindi lang ako sure if the Snapdragon 778G 5G will hold up to its own for the next 5 years. Siyempre, more applications needs to be updated and it will really demand a higher chipset for the following years. So yes, kung medyo nakulangan tayo no sa kanyang performance, pag-usapan naman <laughs> pag-usapan naman natin yung kanyang display which is something na talaga namang ikinatuwa ko. Of course, lagi ko naman tong sinasabi pag Samsung ang usapan because they really don't disappoint. It has a 6.7 inch Super AMOLED display with HDR10 Plus and 120Hz refresh rate with a Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection. Actually, no, specs on paper, even on real life, para sa akin, no, top-notch talaga yung display, mapa brightness and kulay. Alam talaga ni Samsung gumawa ng magagandang screens. Siguro, no, ang hindi ko lang nagustuhan is yung placement ng in-display fingerprint sensor natin. Yes, so meron tayo. It is okay. Consistent siya. In fairness naman, and I don't see any problem so far in the past few weeks. Yun nga lang talaga guys, it needs a little of adjustment kung manggagaling kayo sa ibang Android device na nasa gitna ang in-display fingerprint sensor dahil location-wise medyo mababa siya. Anyway, in terms of audio, na-enjoy ko rin together with its really really nice display nga katulad ng sinabi ko kanina. It has a stereo uh, speaker setup. Yung isang speaker, guys, is located doon sa kanyang earpiece. Hindi naman mala cinematic, but again, it's an okay experience. By the way, hindi pala ako nakapag-phone tour kanina, guys, no? Actually, there's nothing much to note about it. Dalawa lang. Unang-una, wala pa rin tayong headphone jack sa kanya as usual. Pangalawa, yung SIM tray. Good news, guys. Expandable via micro SD card yung device. Pero you have to choose if dual SIM or one SIM lang with the SD card. Ngayon, pag-usapan na natin yung cameras na meron itong A73 5G. Sa totoo lang, no, medyo, um, what should we say? <laughs> Parang, yeah, nag-iisip ako ng tamang adjective, no, to describe it. Sa totoo lang, guys, uh, mataas yung expectations ko sa phone dahil first time gumamit ni Samsung ng 108 megapixels sa um, mid-range device nila. Mostly, hindi mostly, pero palaging nasa flagship ito. Samsung lang to guys, ah, kasi most mid-range devices from other brands like Xiaomi, Realme, even Huawei, yung mga mid-range devices nila, talaga namang 108 megapixels ang sensor. Bukod sa 108 megapixel with OIS main camera niya, it also comes with a 12 megapixel ultra-wide lens a 5 megapixels depth sensor and a 5 megapixel macro lens. Kung natatandaan niyo pa yung review natin ng Samsung Galaxy A72, they have a dedicated telephoto lens. So, pinalitan na nila ito at nilagyan ng macro lens. Medyo conflicted ako dito sa kanilang desisyon. Siyempre, 
higher megapixels pero may mawawala. So, talaga namang may trade-off or may kapalit lahat na may binibigay sa ating maganda. Anyway, if I were to describe yung photos natin sa kanya, pansin ko medyo tone down yung colors na meron tayo, which means very natural looking yung mga photos natin. There is still plenty of details. Unfortunately lang guys, when it comes to night photography, medyo nag-fall short yung ating device. Given of course yung kanyang price point and given na rin yung night photos na in-offer ng ibang brands sa akin, katulad ng Realme GT2 Pro and even ng iPhone SE 3rd generation. Anyway, when zooming in, capable ang device na makapag-zoom digitally up to 10 times. A lot less zooming capability rin guys compared to other smartphones we've tested. For the front camera naman, it has a 32 megapixels. Okay naman ang selfies natin sa kanya. Yun nga lang kabaligtara ng rear camera. It's not as natural looking. But of course, since Samsung ito, may dalawa pa rin naman tayong of course toggle sa kanya which is the wide and the ultra wide. Merong optical image stabilization yung ating video dito sa A73 5G. But yung pagka-stability niya guys, it isn't the highest quality na nakita ko sa isang phone for its price range. It's good enough for casual video shooting. Okay, battery life na pag-uusapan natin dito sa phone na to. It has a 5,000 mAh of battery capacity and is capable to be charged up to 25 watt. It is the same capacity na meron tayo sa A53 5G and the same one from the S21 FE. In fairness naman, no, exceptional battery life yung binigay sa akin ng phone despite it not having an adaptive fast refresh rate or adaptive refresh rate, I mean. Yes, when it comes to the refresh rate going to the settings, it's fixed to 120Hz lang. So, ang inexpect ko talaga sa kanya, it will consume a lot of, you know, battery juice. Around 7 hours of screen on time yung nakuha natin sa kanya. And usually, guys, 2 full days yung tinagal sa akin ng device. So, yun nga lang, no, I was not able to test the charging capability or the speed of this phone since wala akong um, Samsung power brick as of the moment here sa studio. Ang hirap gumawa guys ng um, charging speed pag walang kasamang mga accessory sa loob ng box. Actually, na parang ang bilis ng video natin. <laughs> Probably because there's really not much to say about this phone. Not in a bad way, marami rin namang good aspects yung E73 5G. If only meron siyang mas premium processor, it could have been a really great phone. But anyway, sa tingin ko, medyo mas mahihirapan si Samsung na i-leverage yung iba nilang phones, katulad ng S21 FE, even their base S22, kapag tinasa nila yung processor ng E73 5G. So yes, alam nyo, medyo expected ko na rin naman ito dahil kapag a series talaga, hindi talaga niya selling point ang gaming. In terms of alternative, may mga phones akong pwedeng i-recommend na nasa halos same price bracket niya. Katulad ng iPhone SE 3rd generation, camera-wise, maganda siyang i-consider. But then again, medyo may pagkukulang din talaga yung phone. Pangalawa, may Realme GT2 Pro tayo. As of now, mahal siya sa Shopee. But usually, pag may mga sale, bumababa naman yung kanyang presyo. Pero, ito lang yung masasabi ko, no? Pag Samsung talaga iba, yung quality and user experience, hindi siya kayang i-offer ng ibang brands. Overall, I think Samsung as a brand will really offer you a wholesome experience compared to other brands. So yeah, actually, no, yun lamang for our long-term review of the E73 5G. Kung kayo tatanungin ko, guys, bibili ba kayo ng bago nilang high-end mid-range device or you will consider um, other brands instead? Let me know, guys, in the comment section below. Again, it's your tech girl, Mary, and see you on our next video. Bye, guys!